Do we have any more of those pork rinds up there? I don't know how you guys eat that crap. The stop and go in Schweinsville was all out of wheat gluten and tofu bars. Hell, it's your colons. Why are you so interested in my colon? Brenda tells me you have enough colon fixation for the three of us. <laughs> hey, those are Daryl's videos. What's in this stuff anyways? Damn it! Oh crap! Oh, this really sucks. Everyone chill out and we'll be fine. Is everything put away? Um. Yeah. I think so. Everything's cool, we'll be fine. We were probably just speeding or something. We weren't going that fast. License and registration, please. Can you grab my registration out of the glove box? Kids going to the concert? Yes, sir. Do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, I guess I was speeding, sir. You know how fast you were going? I don't know, uh, maybe 45. Clock to you at 50. Do you know what the speed limit is on this road? Um, I think it's 30 miles per hour, sir. That's right. Which means you were driving 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. Did you know that I could arrest you for driving that fast? But it didn't seem like we were driving Did that fast. Did you know that I could arrest you for driving that fast? No. Do you have any alcohol or illegal drugs in this car? No, sir. What about your friend? Looks a little out of it. Zana, you feeling all right? You look a little spacey. I'm just, I'm just a little nervous, that's all. Nervous? Well, you shouldn't be nervous unless you have something to hide, right? Zana, is there anything you want to tell me? All right, everyone step out of the car, please. You don't have any drugs in here. You don't mind if I take a look, do you? No. Damn, this car is disgusting. You guys are a bunch of animals. I'm just trying to make a living here. I don't know why you got to make me dig through all this crap. Jeez, it smells like Bob Marley's ass in here. You kids been toking the reefer or what? Who belongs to this? That's mine. You don't have any drugs in here? No. You don't mind if I take a look then? What if I say no? Daryl Borden, I want you to listen to me very closely. You have two choices. You can either make things better or you can make things worse for yourself. If you cooperate with me, I'll help you. Do you understand me? Yeah. If you choose not to cooperate with me, I can't help you. I'll have to arrest you and keep you overnight in a jail cell with some very bad men who would love to do some very bad things to skinny little boys like the two of you. Do you understand your choice? Are these yours? Those are mine. Well, thank you very much. Well...
Carol, this is your bag, which makes this your marijuana. Am I right? Yeah, that's mine. It's just a little bud. It, it's no big deal. So Cyril was kind enough to hold your um, items in his bag. Does any of this belong to you too, miss? The pipe is mine. Hmm. It smells freshly used. You're not going to let your friends take the full rep for this, are you? Tell me the truth. Were you smoking on this too? No, we didn't smoke any today. We were just going to smoke at the concert. I appreciate your honesty. But this isn't Amsterdam. In the United States, you're in possession of an illegal and dangerous substance, and I'm going to have to place you all under arrest. Everyone put your hands on the car, now. Victor 11 going 10, 15, three times, requesting backup. I'm going to read you your rights now. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. If you were suddenly facing the same police encounter, would you be prepared to handle the pressure and confusion any better than Daryl and his friends did? I'm Ira Glasser. Between 1978 and 2001, I was executive director of the American Civil Liberties Union and had a great deal of experience with encounters like this one. During most police encounters, officers hold an overwhelming power advantage, not only because they represent the power and authority of the state, but also because most people are unprepared to handle the pressure and confusion of such situations. Whether or not you break the law, this video is designed to explain what the law is and how you can legally and properly assert your constitutional rights during even the most stressful police encounters. By knowing and exercising your rights, you become a better citizen. In addition, you'll be more prepared to balance the power between yourself and police, who often try to get you to waive your rights. Although you're generally better off respectfully asserting your rights, Doing so is no guarantee against police misconduct, but showing the police that you know your rights can make them cautious about violating your rights. If you slept through high school civics class, now's the time to wake up. Here's why. If you give up your rights, as many people naively do during police encounters, these rights can no longer protect you. In the scene you just watched, Daryl and his friends waived their rights repeatedly, without even knowing it. The rights that protect you during police encounters come directly from the Bill of Rights, which is the first ten amendments to the U.S. Constitution. When the Founding Fathers created a new government in 1789, they were keenly aware of the dangers posed by unchecked government power. That is why they added a Bill of Rights. There are three amendments in particular that today play the biggest role in protecting you during police encounters. The Fourth Amendment states in part that the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. The Fifth Amendment states in part that no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The Sixth Amendment states in part that in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Let's check back with Daryl and his friends. They're on the way to the concert again, but let's see how things could go very differently when Daryl exercises his constitutional rights. Oh look, we've got a fan. Oh crap. Oh, this really sucks. Listen, everybody be cool and put up your windows. We're probably just speeding. Let me do all the talking and everything will be fine. Got it? Okay. Troy, are you with me? Remember, let me do all the talking, all right? You're the man. Good afternoon, officer. Why'd you pull me over? Do you know why I pulled you over? I don't know, officer. That's why I asked. You're speeding. The clock to you at 50. Can I see your license and registration, please? No problem. 
Can you get my registration on the glove box? Daryl, do you know what the speed limit is on this road? The speed limit is 30. I clocked you at 50, which means you were going 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. Did you know that I could arrest you for driving that fast? Officer, how can I help? All right, I need everyone to step out of the car, please. Why, officer? Step out of the car now. Why'd you lock your car? Don't you think your car's safe here? A habit. Are you detaining us, officer, or are we free to go now? Mr. Borden, can I see your car keys, please? Why? I need to give your car a look to make sure you don't have anything you're not supposed to have. You don't have anything to hide, do you? No, officer. I don't consent to any searches, sir. According to this registration, this isn't even your car. Is your name Mary? This is my sister's automobile, sir. I'm sure she wouldn't want her car searched either, sir. Look, smart guy, I want you to listen to me very closely. You have two choices. You can either make things better, or you can make things worse for yourself. If you cooperate with me, I'll help you. Do you understand me? If you choose not to cooperate with me, I can't help you. You'll have to wait here for the police dogs to come and tear your car apart. If the dogs find anything you're not supposed to have, I'm going to throw your ass in a jail cell overnight with some very bad men who would love to do some very bad things to two skinny boys like you two. Do you understand your choice? Officer, are we free to go now? Okay, lawyer boy, you've made your choice. We're going to have to take this to the next level now. You stay right here. Mr. Borden, here's your speeding ticket. Drive safely and don't let me pull you over again. Thank you, officer. Have a nice day. What the hell just happened? Oh my God, you're the man. You're the man, dude. That was like, that was like some Jedi mind trick, man. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at the ways Daryl handled himself in the two parallel scenes you just watched. At the beginning of both scenes, Daryl turned the car off and placed his hands on the steering wheel after he was pulled over. This is a good safety precaution because officers like to see your hands for their own safety. So wait until the officer asks to see your paperwork before retrieving your documents. But that's where the similarities end. In the first scene, Daryl waived his rights as soon as he started talking to the officer. Do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, I guess I was speeding, sir. Daryl just gave up his Fifth Amendment protection against self-incrimination by admitting to breaking a law. There's no need to confess to the officer that you were speeding or breaking a law. He's playing gotcha games with you. Instead, when an officer approaches your window, start by calmly and courteously asking this first question. Good afternoon, officer. Why'd you pull me over? Good move. Don't play into the officer's gotcha games because you can't win. See how Darrell only opened his window partway? enough to talk to the officer and pass him his license and registration, this makes it more difficult for the officer to stick his nose in the car and claim he smells or sees something. However, if the officer asks you to roll down the window all the way, you should probably do it. All right, everyone step out of the car, please.
All three exit the car. Darrell leaves his driver's side door conspicuously open. By leaving the car door wide open, Darrell made his car an easier target for the officer to search. You don't have any drugs in here? You don't mind if I take a look, do you? No. Did Darrell mean, no, I don't have any drugs in the car? Or, no, officer, you can't take a look in the car? Unfortunately, the officer's compound question tricked Darrell into complying with his search request. And since Darrell didn't say anything to the contrary, he gave up his Fourth Amendment protection by consenting to a search. Now watch as Darrell consents again to the search of his bag, even though he knows he's got illegal items in there. Darrell, let him look in the damn bag! Bad advice from Troy, and a bad idea for Darrell to let himself be intimidated by the officer's threats. If you have contraband, and you consent to a police officer's search request, you will be arrested. Daryl, this is your bag, which makes this your marijuana. Am I right? Yeah, that's mine. It's just a little bud. It's no big deal. Daryl should bite his tongue. Now is definitely not the time for him to confess or voice his opinions about marijuana laws. The officer is not your priest, and he's not your psychologist. Police are not paid to keep your secrets. They're paid to find, arrest, and help prosecute you. So anything you say can and probably will be used against you in court. In the second scene, Darrell skillfully blocked the officer's continuous attempts to search his car. Why'd you lock your car? Don't you think your car's safe here? Habit. Are you detaining us, officer, or are we free to go now? Listen closely to that line again. Are you detaining us, officer, or are we free to go now? This is the right thing to say for two reasons. One, Darrell is responding to the officer's question with his own question, which keeps him from falling prey to the officer's gotcha games. Two, instead of waiting for the officer to give him permission to leave, Darrell is dismissing himself from the encounter by asking if he is free to go. You don't have anything to hide, do you? No, officer. I don't consent to any searches, sir. This could be one of the most important lines you may ever have to deliver in your entire life. I don't consent to any searches, sir. Darrell remains courteous, but is not intimidated by this all too common tactic. If the dogs find anything you're not supposed to have, I'm gonna throw your ass in a jail cell overnight with some very bad men who would love to do some very bad things to two skinny boys like you two. Do you understand your choice? Your rights do not disappear just because an officer threatens to call in the dogs. And refusing a search does not give the officer the legal right to search or detain you. Finally, did you notice how Darrell graciously accepted the traffic ticket? Never complain about a ticket, especially when you know how much worse a traffic stop could become. And never let an officer try to convince you that he'll rip up your ticket if you consent to a search. If this happens, just ask for the ticket because you can always contest it later in traffic court. And being in traffic court is always better than criminal court. The Supreme Court has generally ruled that police officers do not need a warrant to search your car during a traffic stop if they have probable cause to believe something illegal is present, although there are important exceptions. The precise meaning of probable cause is fuzzy. Basically, probable cause means that the police must have some evidence to believe that criminal activity is going on in order to legally search your car. In other words, an officer's hunch without evidence that you're up to no good is not enough to search or arrest you. Before searching, he must observe something more tangible. For example, if the officer sees marijuana, a pipe or a roach, a judge will conclude that the officer was justified in doing the search. This is what's known as the plain view rule. Police do not need a search warrant in order to confiscate any illegal items that they see in plain view. That means keep your private items private and out of sight. Most avoidable police searches occur not because police have probable cause, but because most people, like Darrell, get tricked or intimidated into consenting to search requests. 
giving an officer consent to search automatically makes the search legal in the eyes of the law. And in most states, officers are not required to tell you about your right not to consent to a search request. So if you're pulled over by a police officer, do not try to figure out whether or not the officer has enough evidence to legally search you. If he has to ask, it probably means that he doesn't have evidence. You have nothing to lose by refusing to consent to search requests and everything to lose if you do. If an officer searches you illegally and finds contraband, despite your refusal to consent, your lawyer can file a motion to suppress or throw out the evidence in court. If the judge agrees that the officer's search violated your constitutional rights, he'll grant the motion to suppress, your charges would then be dismissed, and you'd be free to go. You've just learned how you can better protect yourself during traffic stops, which make up about 50% of all citizen police encounters. Now let's observe how a young man waiting for a bus deals with a police encounter on a public street. Copy that, dispatch. We have a visual contact with a suspicious male, black, approximately 20 years old. We're going to ask him some questions, over. Hey, kid, how long you been sitting there? Huh? Oh, I don't know, about 20 minutes. What are you doing around here? Waiting for the bus. Why are you still waiting? Don't buses run every 15 minutes? It's late, I guess. Late? You guessed. What are you doing around here, smart guy? Going home. Where's home? Franklin Street. Franklin Street? What are you, handicapped or something? What? No. Franklin Street's a five-minute walk from here. He could have been there 15 minutes ago. I see some ID. They right there, Mr. Heller. Come over here, Mr. Heller. So why are you still sitting at the bus stop? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, that's my bus right there. No, wait right here, Mr. Heller. Oh, that bus is heading north, which is away from where you live. Where are you really going? I'm going to my girlfriend's place. So why'd you lie to me and tell me you were going home? Yeah, I thought so. Run this ID for me, Dale. Mr. Heller, please place your hands on the car. Why are you hassling me? I didn't do anything. Put your hands on the car now and shut up. 1029 by name and date of birth. Uh, name is Michael Heller. You don't speak unless I ask you questions. You understand me? Copy. Does he have any warrants, Dale? No, no probation either. He's clean. Mr. Heller, your hands are covered in paint. Someone's been vandalizing the storefronts in the neighborhood. Look, man, I'm an art student. You look at my sketchbook, it's in my bag. I just got a class. Man. No, look what we got here. It looks like graffiti paint. Hey, Rod, does this kid's ghetto art look just like those fresh tags on the laundromat around the corner? Yeah, it looks like a match. I think we got our man. Mr. Heller, you're coming to the station with us. Please place your hands behind your back. Mr. Heller, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint you one. Did you see his sketchbook? Yes, I did. That Mr. Hell is a real talented artist. He sure is. With everything he has in his bag, the DA's got a slam dunk case here. Punk kids think you can get away with anything. But this time, you're busted, buddy. Hey, Dale, what's the sentence for felony vandalism? Six to 12 months and a $5,000 fine. Ouch. Look like somebody's gonna have to bend over and grab their ankles. Tough break, kid. Man, I'm telling you the truth. I'm an art student. I'm on scholarship. Hey, look, kid, if you do the crime, you gotta be ready to do the time. Listen, Mike, you don't seem like a bad kid, but you did mess up. Now, I don't wanna see you go to jail, but you gotta be smart. 
you take my advice, I'll be able to help you out. When we get back to the station, I'm going to give you a document to sign, and that'll be a get-out-of-jail-free pass. If you sign it, you'll go home tonight, and we'll recommend probation to the DA. Believe me, that's your best shot at staying out of jail. You understand? Yeah. I didn't do anything. Let's take a closer look at some ways Mike could have avoided or simply made the best of the terrible situation in which he now finds himself. I see some ID. When asked to do so, Mike immediately handed the police officer his license. Although it's a common knee-jerk reaction to show your ID when requested by police officers, the fact is you are not necessarily required to identify yourself to an officer on the street. The law about this differs from state to state. And although the Supreme Court has struck down some state laws that require people to show ID to the police, it has not prohibited it under all circumstances. You should check the law in your state, perhaps by calling your local ACLU office before automatically complying with such requests. When he was provoked by the officer, Mike failed the attitude test. Why are you hassling me? I didn't do anything. Put your hands on the car now and shut up. Don't ever under any circumstances, talk back or raise your voice to a police officer. You have nothing to gain and everything to lose by escalating the hostility level of the encounter. Here's how Mike could have responded to the officer's initial questions. Officer, look, I know you're just doing your job, but I've got nothing to say to you. I've got to catch my bus. A little courtesy and respect go a long way. If the officers refuse to let you leave and order you to put your hands against the car, for example, you have nothing to lose by clearly stating your refusal to consent to a search. But you should only verbally refuse and never physically resist. Just touching an officer could land you with a felony charge of assaulting a police officer. Even if you're detained on the street, officers are legally allowed to frisk the outside of your clothing to check for guns or knives only if they have a basis for suspecting that you're armed. In Mike's case, where they were investigating a graffiti crime, there appeared to be no basis to justify a pat down. Never try to run away from the police under any circumstances. If police see someone running away, especially in a high crime neighborhood, that gives them all the legal justification they need to chase and stop him. Sometimes people fleeing the police out of panic have even been shot at. Don't run. The law may seem harsh on this point, but it's what the Supreme Court decided. If you see police approaching, stand your ground and be prepared to assert your rights, but don't run. Now, I don't want to see you go to jail, but you got to be smart. If you take my advice, I'll be able to help you out. Don't believe a word of it. Officers are not there to act as your advocate. Their job is to find, arrest, and help convict you. So ask for a real lawyer and shut up. Remember, you are not required to answer police questions without the assistance of a lawyer. If you ever have a run-in with officers who you think are violating your constitutional rights, don't resist them. But as soon as you can, write everything down about the incident, including witnesses' names and contact information and the officers' names and badge numbers. File a police misconduct report immediately afterwards and consult your local ACLU chapter for advice. As a good citizen, it's your job to make sure that unprofessional police officers are held accountable for their actions because doing so protects both your rights and the rights of others in your community. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that the home is entitled to maximum protection from police searches and seizures. Specifically, the court has ruled that even if an officer has probable cause to believe that something illegal is going on inside your home, with a few exceptions, he may not enter without a search warrant. In many instances, people without thinking invite the police into their homes. Consenting to a police officer's request to enter or search your home automatically makes the entry or search legal. You should never consent.
cars. I just saw some cop cars pull up outside, so everyone chill out. Um, do you know where Valerie's at? Um, alright. Valerie? 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 Do you mind if we come in? Um, sure. Hi, do you live here? Um, no, I, I, I don't, um, I don't live here. I can get, I can get her for you. Valerie? Valerie! Hi, let me guess. You're Valerie. Do you yeah. live here? Hi. Yeah, I do. Um, is everything okay? I mean, I know we were, like, really loud, and I'm, I'm really sorry. We'll keep it down. We stopped by because we got a noise complaint from a neighbor. We just wanted to make sure that everything was okay here. Looks like you've had a real wild party going on. From the looks of it, a lot of people are drinking and maybe doing drugs. Um, what you got there, Mark? Wow, look at this. Yeah, yeah. Smells fresh. This is a nice little piece of glass sculpture you have here, Valerie. Is this yours? Yeah, it's mine, but we, we weren't doing anything wrong. Valerie, honey, we appreciate your honesty. You just tell us the truth and everything will be okay. How many drinks have you had tonight? I don't know. Uh, maybe a few beers, I guess. Everyone here is 21, right? Valerie, sweetheart, is anyone here under 21? No, everyone's over 21. How old are you, Valerie? 21. Do you mind showing us your ID, please? I'll be 21 in a couple of weeks. Valerie, you've just lied to us. Do you know that I could arrest you for that, for obstructing justice and falsifying a statement to a police officer? Now, it looks to me like you've been hosting an alcohol party here with underage drinkers. And you've already admitted to supplying that party with marijuana, which makes you a drug dealer. Don't you know you can go to prison for that? Why are you guys doing this to me? This isn't fair. Nobody's hurting anyone. Valerie, no one is doing anything to you. But if you help us, we can help you. I need you to listen to me carefully. Are you listening? Yes. Because there's marijuana here, we're going to have to bring in the canine unit to search the house. Now, the dogs sometimes cause a lot of damage and tear things up. But if there are drugs in this house, they will find them, and then you'll be in big trouble. But here's where you can help us and also help yourself. Now, if you show us where the rest of the pot is in this house, we'll put in a good word for you. If you don't, we've got no choice but to bring in the dogs. Valerie, do you understand your choice? Yes. It's up to you. Which is it? Follow me. It's upstairs. It's in the drawer. All of it. Are you sure? There are no other drugs on the premises. I swear to God, that's everything. Do either of you know anything about this? No. They didn't know about it. It's all mine. Nobody knew it was here. Valerie, we appreciate your honesty. You did the right thing. You seem like a really sweet girl, which is why we hate to have to do this. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Wait, you're arresting me? You're under arrest for what? felony possession of marijuana with intent to distribute. But wait, this isn't fair. You promised if I helped you, you wouldn't arrest me. That is not what I said. Yes, you did. Listen, it's not our fault that you chose to break the law. You brought this on yourself. Valerie will get a second chance to do it right. But as for the rest of you, you'd better be prepared to assert your rights and protect yourself in this situation on the first try. Do it at your own house.
class. You don't do it here, okay? Thank you, sweetie. seems to be the problem. We got a noise complaint from a neighbor. We just wanted to make sure everything's okay here. Sounds like you turned the music down, which is a good start. So please keep the volume down so we don't have to come back. I promise we'll keep it down, officers. I apologize for the inconvenience. While we're here, we need to do a routine checkup to make sure everything's okay inside. Do you mind if we take a look? Why? When you opened the door, I smelled something funny. Is anyone smoking marijuana in there? I don't smell anything, officers. How can I help you? We just need to do a required routine check. Now, if everything's okay inside, could you go ahead and let us take a look? Everything's under control, officers. Look, I know you're both just doing your jobs, but without a search warrant, I can't let you inside. Should I go ahead and get a search warrant? No, I think everything's under control here. We're counting on you to keep the noise down. If we get one more complaint, we're gonna have to come back with a paddy wagon. Can we trust you to keep it down? I promise we'll keep it down, officers. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Have a good night. Keep it down and have a good night. So long. Cops are gone. Let's party. Oh, no. Hey, I don't think so, fool. Listen, if you're going to hang out here, you're going to have to keep it down for the rest of the night. If not, you got to go elsewhere. Understand? That sucks. It's better than getting busted. That's right, Valerie. Getting busted is no party. You protected yourself and your friends from arrest by knowing and exercising your rights. That's what being a good neighbor and citizen is all about. Let's take a closer look at the ways Valerie handled herself in the two parallel scenes you just saw. At the start of the first scene, Valerie was negligent in performing her hostess duties. She was completely unaware of who was entering and leaving her house and paid no attention to her guests' activities. Anytime you host a loud party, you're exposing yourself to a likely police visit. And as often happens with house parties, a naive partygoer is the one who invites the police into your house. So be mindful of other entrances to your home because police will often enter through less guarded side or back door entrances. A lot of people are drinking and maybe doing drugs. Whoops, how did the officer find that? because it was in plain view, that's how. If an officer is legally invited inside your home, any illegal items that are out in the open are fair game for the officer to seize as evidence, which can lead to your arrest. I'll be 21 in a couple of weeks. Valerie, you've just lied to us. Never lie to the police when questioned. If the officer asks you a question that you know the answer to, but don't want to reveal because it may be used against you, you do not have to answer. You are better off not answering than lying and having the officer arrest you or use it against you later. Valerie gets off to a much better start in the second scene. She is attentive to her guests' needs and she's careful to keep evidence of possible illegal activity out of sight. Valerie is always ready to greet guests at the door and she takes advantage of the all-important peephole. Upon seeing the officers, Valerie greets them outside and closes the door behind her. What seems to be the problem? We just need to do a required routine check. Now, if everything's okay inside, could you go ahead and let us take a look? Everything's under control, officers. Look, I know you're both just doing your jobs, but without a search warrant, I can't let you inside. Again. Without a search warrant, I can't let you inside. Even without a warrant, the police could enter by claiming that they smelled marijuana in the few seconds the door was open. But in most instances, Valerie's refusal to consent in the absence of a warrant will keep the police from entering if they don't have another independent reason to do so. Before we recap what we've learned, we must point out the few situations where your constitutional protections against warrantless searches do not apply. The first two are common knowledge. Be aware that airport security personnel 
do not need a warrant or probable cause to search you or your belongings before boarding any commercial airplane. So remember that any time you enter a security area to board a commercial airplane, you consent to a search. The same exception applies whenever you cross international borders. Therefore, any time you cross the border, you consent to a search. Private security personnel, who outnumber police officers in the United States by three to one, generally have a right to search you as a condition of entry into private property. In such cases, it's up to you to decide if a search is worth the price of admission. As long as you're free to walk away, the security personnel do not pose a threat to your constitutional liberties. Keep in mind that private security guards can turn any illegal items found on you over to the police. So if security guards ever try to search you after you've entered a club or concert venue, for example, do not consent and insist on leaving the premises immediately. Usually the police will not formally arrest you for a minor traffic stop or a refusal to consent to a search. But if you're formally arrested, police may search you without a warrant. Now let's repeat what could be the three most important lines you may ever have to deliver in your entire life. Officer, I do not consent to any searches. Officer, am I free to go? Officer, I have nothing to say until I speak with my lawyer. If you've been paying close attention throughout this video, you're now a more intelligent citizen and are more prepared to protect yourself and assert your constitutional rights during police encounters. But do you really think that this one-time viewing will fully prepare you for the pressure and confusion of an actual police encounter a month or a year from now? Review this tape often. It takes diligent preparation to overcome the natural fear of standing up for yourself in the face of authority. Become a student of police encounters. For additional online resources, visit the American Civil Liberties Union website at www.aclu.org and the Flex Your Rights website at www.flexyourrights.org and consult your local ACLU office as well. Remember that laws often differ from state to state. Finally, don't keep this information secret. As a good citizen, it's your responsibility to pass it on to your friends and family to make sure their rights are protected. Rights mean nothing if you don't know about them. A copy of this video may be one of the most valuable gifts you could ever give. To order copies of Busted, The Citizen's Guide to Surviving Police Encounters, visit the Flex Your Rights website. Now, go flex your rights.